Some good news for us this morning. University of Cape Town Vice Chancellor Professor Mamukheti Bakeng has secured a role as the University of Bristol's first illustrious visiting professor. The appointment is in recognition of her outstanding work in mathematics education and in university leadership. The position will see Professor Bakeng interact with Bristol's academic community through a series of public lectures. Professor Bakeng joins us now for uh, more on, on this and what it means for UCT's global standing. Prof, let me begin our interview this morning by saying a hearty congratulations to you. The information I have here in front of me it, it, it lords you as uh, Maths Einstein Bakeng get new role at top UK university. Incredible stuff, Prof. Congrats. Uh, thank you very much, Michelle. I, I mean, I think the Einstein bit was to get you to read it. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have read the story, right? So, but thank you very much. It's, it's a great honor to be appointed as uh, the first illustrious uh, visiting professor at the University of Bristol. Um, of course, it's one of the, the one of UK's top 10 universities, yeah. and it's one of our top collaborators at UCT. Uh, so it's incredible. Um, I feel really honored and humbled to be the first. What does this mean for, for UCT? I mean, it's standing as the top institution on the African continent and the counterpart there in the UK. What does this mean for U UCT's global standing as well? I mean, it, it means the work that we do at UCT is recognized. It's recognized as global scholarship. And not only that, but it is sought after mm. to influence the work that a top 10 US, uh, a UK university wants to have in their midst to influence what they're doing. Mm. Uh, because that's what visiting uh, uh, professors do. Uh, they, they, they get called into a university so that they can inject their work, their thinking um, and ideas into the work of the university to advance it better. So, so it really shows the recognition that UCT has in the world as a, as a global university. And for you, Professor Pakeng, uh, now that uh, we are able to travel more than previously, more than over the past um, 18 or so, let's say two years, what does it mean for you in terms of your interactions of, of how this will play out over the next term? Will it be in person? Will some of it be virtual? Some of it will be virtual. So in the first six months, what I'm, I'm going to be doing, I'll, 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 I'll give a, a lecture that will be available, I mean, accessed by um, a, a, an international audience and people in South Africa will be able to see the lecture. Um, and, and then I would, um, there will be visits. I mean, it won't be just one, one of visits. I will structure visits uh, in the second six months mm. um, to work with specific groups uh, at, at the University of Bristol. I mean, University of Bristol holds the UNESCO chair in inclusive and good quality education. And, and I will work with the, with the chair, Professor Leon Tickley. Uh, I will also work with, with other um, high profile international educational projects at the University of Bristol, uh, Transforming Education for Sustainable Futures uh, is located at the University of Bristol. I'll work with them. And, and also the Mathematics Education Research Network, which is also housed at the University of Bristol. I'll be working with them. So I'll work with smaller groups, um, uh, sometime virtually, and when I'm there, I'll work with them face to face. But of course, as part of this, besides the work that I'll do virtually, mm -hmm. there will be a face to face lecture that I will do in person uh, uh, in Bristol uh, before um, the end of the professorship. Mm. A, a lot being said as well, Prof, about the incredible work that you've done um, in mathematics education broadly, but also the work that you've done on multilingual mathematics in classrooms in South Africa. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. The work that I've done, I mean, I, I started the work uh, uh, the, the, with the interest that was focused on trying to understand why is it that students who learn mathematics in a language that's, their, that's not their own mm. don't perform as well as those who learn mathematics in their home language. Yeah. And, and I wanted to understand what is it that's happening um, in their classrooms because my, my view was that 
Uh, it is about um, uh, what happens in the classroom. So I started by looking into the multilingual classrooms uh, where the teacher is also multilingual, the learners are multilingual, and, 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 and so looking at how the teachers teach. And from there, I, I then figured out what are the challenges in those classrooms and then thought, and, and clearly language was one of the major issues uh, in those classrooms because it shaped the mathematics that teachers make available to the learners because not, they take them taking into re, uh, uh, recognition the fact that the learners are not so fluent in the language of learning and teaching. And then I went on to design an intervention. So what do we do in multilingual classrooms where children don't share um, a, a first language or they don't learn in the language uh, uh, that's their first language? What do we do? The, the language of learning and teaching is English. Uh, they want access to English because they recognize the power of English. So how do we make sure that they can draw on their home languages or fluency in other languages to enable their mathematics teaching? And teachers were using code switching, and code switching had some benefits. But the intervention recognized that the, the, the code switching was limited because it was often as a result of a, a learner asking, requesting for permission to switch, or the teacher mm. thinking that the learner wants the switching. Mm. So the intervention then focused on a multilingual approach. And, and that's the intervention that, I, that I, 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 I put on the table. If we had time, I would talk more about what that intervention included, um, included and what were the successes that I saw with the intervention. Yes, so so yeah. that's largely my work. Yeah, I mean, yes, I'd love for you to expand on that because one does get the sense that the issue of um, multilingualism in terms of mathematics in the classroom has not in many, many respects translated to learners benefiting from exactly what you've just said. Yeah, well, the, at the moment we don't have multilingual teaching. We've got yeah. multilingual classrooms, we've got multilingual learners and multilingual teachers. And, and the big challenge is the fact that parents, learners and teachers want access to English. And the perception is if you want access to English, you keep the classroom to English only. Mm -hmm. Whether the children understand or not, you stick to it. And you, in some classrooms, you even punish those who speak in any other language. Now, the, the multilingual approach to mathematics teaching that I introduced is the one that says we acknowledge the fact that you want to um, uh, become fluent in English. We're not going to stop you from doing that. Mm. So we want to make that possible. So we make English available, but then we also make the learner's home language available. So you offer every written text in two languages. And it doesn't have to be on one page. So the one page is the English, the other page is their home language. And the learner can choose at any one time which version they look at. Yeah. They don't have to announce their difficulty with English. Um, they can go to it as and when they need. And then in the classroom during teaching, uh, they are also given permission to speak in any, to interact in any language that they feel comfortable in. The groups, uh, students are, are given, if they are working in groups, they are given permission to join, whether it's a Chivenda group or it's a Setswana group, they can go with which, whichever group that they want, or it's a Zulu group. Some learners uh, speak more than one language, mm. and so they can go in any group. But, but the idea is firstly to make language a non-issue mm. in the mathematics classroom, so that mathematics becomes the focus, so that the teacher doesn't spend time correcting or dealing with issues of language. Yeah. And when you do that, the, it, it does refocus the learners on the mathematics because language becomes an unthinkable. Mm. What becomes in the focus is mathematics. So of course, mathematics is also a form of communication. So it's in a way a language. Um, and so, so, so that's what you start grappling with. And that's what actually should happen in a mathematics classroom, yeah. not grappling with English or Zulu or whatever, yeah. but grappling with mathematics and, and the language of mathematics. I mean, it, it does seem so obvious, doesn't it, Prof, that this should absolutely be happening in our classrooms. English is my first language. I still struggled with mathematics. I can't imagine doing yeah. it in another language. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you think about it, that's what happens with um, Africans learners when they write exams. They get exams 
in English and in Afrikaans. And many Afrikaans families want their children to be fluent in English as well because of the hegemony of English in the world. And so children get the exam paper in English. Uh, some, some Afrikaans families say they, are, they want their children to learn in English. But in the exam, they have the benefit of looking at it in Afrikaans and, and responding in English. And, and so we can do that for teaching and learning and for exam. And of course, we've been engaging with the, with the Department of Basic Education, and there's now traction. But this work, I've been doing it over many years. And, and, and the answer that I've been getting for, from policymakers has been that, well, it is too expensive. Um, uh, you can't do that. And of course, part of the, uh, the voices that distract this work, I mean, there's, there's a, a group of researchers, I won't mention which university, that did work, and they said to me, well, this can't work because what we did, we gave learners um, a, a test in, in their home language, and they still didn't perform well. And I said to them, of course, they will not perform well. How can you give students a test in Isizulu, when you have taught them in English, or you have taught them uh, mainly in English and they stole communication in Mrs. Mm. Zulu, it's not surprising that they didn't perform well. Mm. So you want to integrate this into teaching and normalize multilingualism or, or, or the use of multiple languages in classrooms to an extent that uh, children do not have to ask for permission. And when they get the, the, the when, when they're in the exam, it is not even it is not even an issue that they, they look at both at both languages. So the, my 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 argument is that I don't think we are ready. Our, our, our environment, actually, our world is ready for just teaching mathematics in an African language. Yeah. And the reason we are not ready is not the problem of their language is the challenge of the hegemony of English. It's because English is so powerful that uh, it makes it difficult to just teach in an African language because an African language, as things stand, doesn't give you access to any other social good except perhaps your understanding of mathematics. So you've got to mix it with English so that people, young people and parents do not feel that they are losing access to English because if they do, we know that they will not have access to other social good that are important for their advancement. Mm. I mean, it's so narrow-minded in a way, or sh well, rather I should say short-sighted to say that um, it's too expensive an exercise because just imagine how much students would benefit from mathematics in their home language, what eventually that will lead to in terms of our economy, students' ability to go into particular industries as well because of the understanding of maths. Absolutely. And, and I have to emphasize mathematics in their home language and English because that's how, yes. how yes. a multilingual society in South Africa interacts. We, we, we mix language, we get in and out of languages, and it's normal for us. And you make that happen. In, I mean, we would benefit immensely. In fact, if you think about it, we will either make more money or save more money yes. because we'll have more learners going into science feeling comfortable and not so threatened and, and enabled. And also feeling that their languages, uh, feeling affirmed, you know. I, I mean, there's something about getting into class and not understanding a problem, a linear programming problem that's put there, and you look at it and you do not really understand what it's saying, but you're supposed to solve it. I mean, that's the most disempowering thing uh, that you can have, even if a child uh, has understood algebraic equations, whatever, once they are put in a linear programming problem, they are not able to use uh, that understanding because they actually don't understand mm. what is said in the problem. Absolutely. Incredible work you're still doing. Professor Mamukheti Pakeng, let me thank you for your time this morning unpacking such an important issue for us uh, and congratulate you once again, uh, the UCT Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Mamukheti Pakeng, landing a role as the University of Bristol's first illustrious visiting professor. We're looking forward to seeing the work you're going to be doing there, Prof. Thanks very much indeed.